What's going on everybody, Stubbs here. I have a interesting one for you today. This is the M18 by SJ Gam, and this was sent over to us for review by Go Game Geek. This is allegedly rocking an RK3566 inside. All right, let's hop in. Look at that mad face. You may know SJ Gam for their previous device, the M17. Look at that badonk. Big ergo grippy back, sloped shoulder buttons. That's nice to see. You can see the battery in there. And they actually have their branding on the battery, SJ Gam. Very strangely diagonally placed select and start. Looks like volume up and down here, home button. D-pad feels much better than the M17. Yeah, you get some nice pivot there. These buttons are rubber membrane. They have a decent amount of play here and the travel feels good. Really no complaints about the buttons here in general. D-pad is loose, definitely a loose style but I kind of like the feel of it. Of course, on the back, these slope triggers are kind of cool. Quiet clicky, a soft clicky. Take a close look at that. Look at those huge bump outs on the back. Definitely reminiscent of the RG405V from Anbernic. Along the bottom here, you have a USB-C, a micro SD card slot, 3.5 headphone out, and then a toggle for on and off. Nothing on the left, nothing on the right, nothing on top. One mono front firing speaker, Kind of reminds me of the old RG351V. Yeah, I would say ergonomics actually feel pretty solid on this. PSP and GBA both should look pretty decent if it can actually play PSP games. Now, this sells on GoGameGeek for $90. With coupon, you can take 10% off. Use the discount code in our description. You have two different colorways for this. You have transparent black and you have gray. It's a nice matte plastic though, and it feels pretty decent quality definitely comparable to the 351v here it's also reminiscent of the d007 by game console take a look at a little size comparison here and here is an r36s from game console as well as the tried and true rg35xx units yeah i would say face buttons both feel a bit better on this than the m17 so definitely an improvement there still not as good as an anburnic style face button this you get a bit more a bit more play but nothing wrong here i mean this isn't bad it's it's totally serviceable i would have liked to seen maybe higher quality plastic on these buttons they do feel sort of cheap but we have a lot of rk3566 devices the most popular really has been the rgb30 from pow kitty joysticks feel to be the same joystick really i mean these are both switch size and switch style meaning they're going to be compatible with various joystick caps for that size I do like these sloped shoulders though, and they feel comfortable to grip. Looks like there's a bit of film on the screen. Satisfying removal. That might have been meant to be a screen protector. Well, this one comes with a 64 gigabyte random card. Ooh, looks like things are gonna be pre-scraped. Love to see that. So this does come with games and pretty limited options here. Looks like they disabled the advanced settings. System version is from 223, 2024. Okay, and there's navigation sounds that they have disabled by default. That's nice, because no thanks. And that's really it. As far as tech specs on this bad boy, so the weight on this is 0.8 pounds or 14.1 ounces. Again, this is a 3566 with a 4.3 inch IPS display. This has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, a 60 hertz screen. The screen resolution is at 480 by 272. This is Emulec 4.3 on it. It has one gigabyte of RAM, four gigs of storage capacity internally. As far as systems on here, it has as NES, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, PlayStation 1, PSP, Arcade, Final Burn Neo, MAME, Atari, Lynx, PC Engine. So I do not see Dreamcast on here. Let's start out with a little bit of GBA. They have lots of games, and they're actually in alphabetical order. Looks like they threw pretty much everything on here. But do they have my favorite? Alien Hominid. Speaker doesn't sound too bad. Looks like there is a bilinear filter applied. I wonder if we can change that. Can we get into RetroArch? That's what I wanna know. Looks like we only get save and load. If you hit the home button, resume, save state, load state, quit. Uh, I don't like it when they lock it down this much. Buttons are responsive. I'm not noticing any latency. And definitely GBA looks good on here. So yeah, it looks like there's no way to 
access RetroArch backend. It's really unfortunate. I do not enjoy having a forced bilinear filter turned on. I'd much rather have pure pixels. But the screen itself is not bad. This is at 100% brightness right now, which is definitely bright enough. It gets fairly dim. Let's try a few more. Doom for Game Boy Advance. I like how quiet the shoulder buttons are. PSP. Looks like we got some God of War on here. Again, no options to get into the settings. So I would love to see some custom firmware on this. Now this is actually running really smooth and I'm not seeing any sort of annoying filter over this either. So this is, yeah, this is feeling good. We have no way to turn on a frame counter, but this feels smooth. I'm not sure if we have any sort of frame skip enabled, but it's having no problem. Now it's interesting that they decided to go with a stick up top here and the D-pad down here. I think this would probably make more sense if we could have gotten the D-pad up there. Since GBA and PSP are both prime systems on here so far, these really should be swapped. Also, we don't necessarily need the second stick there. Should we try a little more PSP? Let's try Ghosts of Sparta. The AliExpress listings I've seen as low as around $51 but not for this specific model number. So I'm not sure what you're getting there. You know, at least everything's seemingly mapped correctly. This one is having what looks like frame skip enabled a little bit. Let's test the headphones. Yeah, headphones work just fine. I'm getting stereo sound, no sort of buzzing or noise. Many of the rest of these PSP games in here are going to be PSP minis. It's just sort of a mixture. The hardware here is not bad, and again, I think it's comfortable, but custom firmware is really what should unlock this. It's going to need to have to be popular enough to even get custom firmware. But speed-wise, I mean, this, this seems to be handling things pretty well. Yeah, the D-pad feels good. Tiny Hawk. I find, might have found a new hidden gem here. Last one, let's do Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, this game feels good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's try some N64. Good old Mario Kart for our friends at Nintendo. Now there is some slowdown for you. Unoptimized N64 emulation. Gotta love it. Now it's really unfortunate you can't get into settings. Yeah, this is this is terrible for N64. This wouldn't be terrible, again, if we had custom firmware to configure and make this be unstupid. Well, that was a terrible experience. I regret every moment of it. We're getting Hadoukens. We're Hadoukening. Oh! All right, I think we're gonna leave it here. Stay tuned for Zoo's video for our review. Final thoughts on this just for now. I really like the ergonomics, it's comfortable. It does get a little bit warm. I like the slope shoulders, they're quiet. The buttons in general are pretty quiet on this. And the D-pad feels like it has a pretty good pivot to it. I was pulling off Hadouken's okay. Face buttons, I was decently whelmed by. Start and select visually are odd, but they're totally fine. You know, the screen really doesn't look too bad. It looks similar to the RG351P. For the price, I would say it's a little bit spendy for what you're getting here. Not only the fact that you have these bilinear filters that you can't turn off, you can't get into any settings to adjust anything. N64 is just a non-starter on this. PSP generally is running pretty well, so at least if you've always wanted a vertical PSP, this is not bad. Same thing for Game Boy Advance. If you wanted a vertical 3-2 aspect ratio Game Boy Advance machine, not a bad choice either. For those two systems, I would say, yeah, it would be a recommend if it would come in around $10 to $20 cheaper, but it's pretty spendy for what you're getting here if you are interested and this fits your particular use case. It's really the only thing like it, so, and nothing really jumps out, no huge QC issues are, are leaping out at me here. It'll be interesting to see custom firmware come out for this and expand its capabilities. I mean, it's huge, but ergonomic. 
joystick, nothing to write home about. It's your standard Switch joystick. Feels fine. I don't feel any cardinal snapping immediately when playing, but they both feel fine, and I like that they're recessed a bit into the shell. But yeah, I'm kind of ho-hum on this one. I would say it's one you could probably safely skip. Let's wrap up. Well, what do you guys think about the M18? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for your dose of handheld goodness. Check out our other videos, join us on Discord to chat and play games, and join us on the next one. As always, this has been Stubbs. Take care of your handhelds, everybody. And each other. Bye.